WebAssembly is going to take over the web development world. Don't believe me? Well, that's very understandable, but hear me out on this one. See, JavaScript has been around a browser since the 1990s, even before the browser war was happening and far before YouTube even existed, and still there was never anything that even remotely replaced it. Instead, JavaScript and its features were enhanced and the experience for both developers and users was getting better and better. Today, building full-blown web apps with things like routing, authentication, large amounts of data and even things like 3D visualizations is as easy as ever in JavaScript. And the JavaScript community grew to one of the largest development communities among all languages. But still I'm making this video, so why do I think WebAssembly is such a big deal? I know, I know, it's far too early to say that WebAssembly will be the future, but there are just a lot of things that make me feel like it will have a huge impact. Of course, WebAssembly might never replace JavaScript in the browser, and that's definitely not what it was intended for. But imagine using the same tools you used for your backend, just for the website for the front end of your app. To me that sounds amazing. When Node.js came along, everyone was super excited because you could use one programming language for the back end and for the front end for good reason. And why should you be limited to just using JavaScript? With WebAssembly you can just choose the language you want to use. You could learn Go or Rust or C++ or anything you want and build an incredibly robust backend and then at the same time, with the same tools, build the user interface. Imagine that somewhere in the future, accessing browser APIs with WebAssembly is as easy as it is with JavaScript right now. And even if it's not directly through WebAssembly, but through some JavaScript interface, it would still open doors for some heavy computing payloads running on the client. And the same thing for WASI, 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 whatever. So running WebAssembly outside the browser on your machine with an interface to file system, network stacks, input devices, and so on. And rest assured, it will be isolated and safe. <laughs> okay, enough enthusiasm from my side. Let's have a quick look at what WebAssembly really is. And after that, let's look at some amazing websites that already use it. And if you're a bit into that web development stuff, I promise you they will blow your mind. This here is the WebAssembly.org website. It describes it as WebAssembly abbreviated WASM is a binary instruction format for a stack-based virtual machine. WASM is designed as a portable compilation target for programming languages, enabling deployment on the web for client and server applications. Okay, wow, that's a lot of information in two sentences, so let's go through it real quick. As the name suggests, WebAssembly works a bit like assembly in the sense that it's a binary instruction format, but it runs on some kind of virtual machine. This is because it's, and I quote, designed as a portable compilation target for programming languages. So it should not be seen as a program language itself, but rather a compilation target. And that's why you can use WebAssembly with a lot of languages such as Rust, Go, C++, Python, Java, the list goes on and on. Last but not least, enabling deployment on the web for client and server applications is what to me sounds like a tasty cocktail on the beach. You can compile your source code to run basically everywhere. In a web browser, on a client PC, on a server, in Docker, you just need that virtual machine. To better understand this, we can use the WebAssembly.studio website to see how this works. We create an Hello World C project, don't be afraid, you don't need to know the C language for this, and this now looks like a pretty normal C program, except you can see the WASM export statements in here, but we don't care about this for now. We just want to see the output. Click on build and have a look at the main.wasm file. Remember WebAssembly was supposed to be binary? Well, this is certainly not. Look at this text. This WASM file is editable as a WAT file and is automatically reassembled to WASM when saved. All this means is that this is not the quote-unquote real WebAssembly code, but some intermediate code stored as a WAT file. We can view the binary version by right-clicking the file and selecting View as Binary. Okay, now this really looks low-level and it is indeed composed of hexadecimal bytes. I don't understand anything, but look at this, it says Hello World here. Your browser, on the other hand, can understand this perfectly well if it supports WebAssembly. So let's hit Run and see what this program does. And there it is, a hello world, as expected. Not that impressive if we consider that this could have been just one line of JavaScript, but think about it again. We just made C code run in our browser and it was really fast. Why not make all apps we commonly use run in the browser? We would never need to download anything again, right? Well, the answer is 
probably not, because it does not make sense to run everything in the browser. You will still have better performance if you run C, C++, etc. outside of WebAssembly. And you also might not want to rely on the internet for some apps. But a lot of companies and apps are still already migrating to WebAssembly. Okay, enough talking. I want to prove to you that WebAssembly is capable of doing a lot of things. For the first example, let's play some Doom 3. Now this game is from 2004, but it still looks pretty good, right? Could we make this run in the browser? Wow, oh my god, so unexpected. It is running in the browser. This impressive demo was done by Continuation Labs, link down below. And I think it's a good example of code that wasn't meant to run in the browser, but is doing just that. So yeah, this is really the full game. It looks like the original and it is running with pretty high FPS too. The loading time for this is also ridiculously low if we consider that we are just running it in the browser. By the way, they also ported another game to WebAssembly that you can play online, so check them out. Some of you might know the C++ graphics engine Magnum. While I have never worked with it, they have a lot of interesting demonstrations that you can view online. One of them is a 2D fluid simulation. So this bad boy is running in real time at 60 frames per second in my browser and my CPU and GPU don't even notice it. So yeah, combining WebAssembly with WebGL works. The next thing I want to show you is what Zuma also showed at Google I.O. 2019, the Squoosh app developed by the Google Chrome Labs. It runs completely client-side and can compress images with different settings, including, well, especially different encoders. While the user interface was built with a classic HTML, JavaScript, blah, blah, blah stack, it uses C, C++ and Rust for image processing and can achieve amazing results. Again, if you want to see more about this, watch the Google I.O. presentation, it's really good. And that's really all I can tell you. WebAssembly is not hyped for no reason. It's really powerful and you should definitely give it a try if you are bored of creating websites just with JavaScript. Thank you for watching, have a great day and cheerio!